at the end of my video focusing on all the Wii U news from the latest Nintendo Direct, I promised you guys that I would also do a video covering the 3DS. So let's go ahead and start mashing some buttons. So in preparation for this video, I went back through the entire Nintendo Direct and focused in on all of the 3DS news, and I really discovered that there was a lot more 3DS news in it than I thought there was at first glance. So I'm going to give some honorable mentions of a few games that either weren't significant enough to focus on or had been covered so much in the past that I thought I would just skip over those games. So the honorable mentions are Mario and Sonic Rio 2016, which is coming to the 3DS and to the Wii U. Pocket Card Jockey, Fire Emblem Fates Revelation, and Hyrule Warriors. So the first game that I want to talk about is Disney Art Academy. And those of you who have gotten to know me so far might ask yourself, why am I talking about this game? Why didn't I just skip it over? Because it's clearly a game that I would not be that interested in buying. Well, to me, the, what's interesting about this game is that it was one of the games that Super Metal Dave 64 actually predicted would be coming to the 3DS before anybody knew anything about this title. So what's worth noting here is that this is yet another piece of uh, legitimate information that came from Super Metal Dave 64. And, you know, and at this point, I think that it's safe to say that if he was right about so many things... And so far, there's been nothing that he's been provably wrong about. I think it's safe to say that Zelda U is coming to the NX and that the NX is currently scheduled to be released in 2016. Another announcement that came out of the Nintendo Direct was that the Virtual Console is being upgraded on the new Nintendo 3DS and we're going to be able to play some of our favorite Super Nintendo games on the 3DS. What's interesting about it is they seem to suggest that these games are only going to be available on the new Nintendo 3DS. And I know a lot of people kind of complained about the new 3DS. There's not a lot of exclusive games for it. Like to date, I believe that Xenoblade Chronicles is actually the only game that's exclusive to it. So those people who are complaining about not enough exclusive uh, content should be happy by this news, although it does seem a little bit strange considering that these are really old games and they don't really need the new 3DS to run properly. I mean, these games could easily run on the Nintendo DS, let alone the 3DS or the new 3DS. So it does seem a little bit weird, and I'm sure there's going to be some people who have the regular 3DS who are kind of upset about being excluded from this. So let's talk about Azure Gunvolt 2. I'm really excited for this game. I played the original game on the 3DS and for those of you who don't know, this is another game from the original creator of the Mega Man series and personally I'm a huge Mega Man fan. So I think this is one of the closest things we can get these days to Mega Man as Capcom doesn't seem to be overly interested in continuing that franchise. The one thing that does kind of tick me off about the Azure Gunvolt franchise is it's exclusive to the 3DS. Personally, you know, I love my 3DS, but I would prefer to have the option of buying and playing this game on my Wii U as well. But beggars can't be choosers. I'm just happy that we're getting a sequel to a fantastic side-scrolling shooter game on the 3DS. RPG fans, this next segment is going to be really appealing to you. As the 3DS has a slew of fantastic looking RPG games coming out this year. Of all the ways to ruin your social life, such as discussing politics on Facebook, or letting your personal hygiene hit disgusting new lows, buying one or all of these next games is probably the funnest way by far. Bravely Second End Lair is a sequel to the critically acclaimed 3DS title, Brilly Default Flying Fairy, is once again published by the legendary RPG studio, Square Enix. We also received further details 
on Dragon Quest 7 and 8 coming to the 3DS in North America this year. And while some people say, oh, these are just remake, it doesn't really matter because it's not new content, these are some of the greatest RPG games ever made. And it also flies in the face of people who say that Dragon Quest XI on 3DS is never going to come to North America. A lot of people were dismissing that idea when they stated that, well, Dragon Quest VII, Dragon Quest VIII never made it to North America. Well, now they have. So I think you have to be excited about the long-term potential of this relationship between Nintendo and Square Enix. Who knows what it'll all lead to? I mean, we already know that Dragon Quest XI is coming to 3DS and has pretty much been confirmed as an NX title as well. And I hope that this strong relationship between Square Enix and Nintendo leads to Final Fantasy VII, the remake, coming to NX, as well as Final Fantasy XV. We also got a debut trailer for Monster Hunter Generations on the 3DS. One of the notable things about this game is that it's a game that actually gives uh, a benefit to the new 3DS owners. In addition to the camera controls that you can only get if you have a cradle on your regular 3DS, the game actually has some graphical enhancements on the new 3DS version as well. Now, the textures are both the same regardless if you're on the 3DS or the new 3DS, but if you look off into the distance, you'll see a lot of enemies pop in more slowly on the regular 3DS, and on the new 3DS, they're just there. So that's one enhancement. And the other enhancement is that the loading times are actually uh, noticeably better on the new 3DS as well. So I'm a big Metroid fan, and I have to say I was really, really let down when Nintendo initially unveiled Metroid Prime Federation Force for the 3DS at last year's E3. And even though with the latest Direct, they have now shown off some more interesting parts of the game, including the campaign mode, I'm still not sold on this game, really, at all. It's just not Metroid to me. I mean, the environments are a little bit Metroid-y, but without Samus Aran as the main character in the game, I think it just loses uh, a big part of its appeal. It's like doing a Mario game that doesn't have Mario in it. I think that I probably will end up picking up this game because I think it's a good demonstration of the added thumb pad on the new 3DS. And graphically, it's decent. I think it could be better. And it's still a Metroid game, so I think I have an obligation as a Metroid fan to at least give it a fair go. But it's just not the direction that I would want out of a Metroid game. If anything, I want to see a Metroid game that is even darker even more grown up than the previous Metroid games. And this just goes in the opposite direction of what uh, I'm interested in. Like, I sort of get where they're going with this, and they want to expand the universe beyond Samus Aran. And it makes some sense going forward, because I think they have to start introducing more characters to that world. But definitely... The next Metroid game has to focus on Samus Aran, but when you when you want to get into making it a really big like multiplayer game, you have to have these other characters introduced. And I think it also adds potentially to where they can go with the story in the future. But if you'll remember from Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, the multiplayer was kind of weird because you just had a bunch of Samus characters running around and trying to kill each other. So I think in a way it's a good direction, but overall it's just, it's not there yet. Hopefully it's just a baby step towards an even better Metroid game on the NX. But right now I'm not overly optimistic about that. And last but certainly not least, I think the biggest 3DS announcement of the day was this new Kirby game. And apparently there's been a whole lot going on in Dreamland. Honestly, with all the Kirby games we've been getting, you can make a case for Dreamland being the most happening place in the universe. There's always something different going on in the Dreamland. This time, Dreamland has been taken over by 
robotics. And by the looks of the action in the trailer, it seems like it's going to really add some new elements to the Kirby game. There's going to be a lot of smashing things apart and some shooting mechanics as well. So I think what we're looking at here is a very different feeling Kirby adventure. And I'm really looking forward to this game. I'm a big Kirby fan. You know, one of the first video games that I played growing up was the Kirby game on the original Nintendo. And that game always has had a soft spot in my heart and i'm really looking forward to uh, experiencing this new game again i like consoles play my 3ds because it's got a bunch of exclusive games that i can't get on my wii u and sometimes it's really nice to just lie up late at night in bed and turn on that portable system and play some games but i again i i wish that we had the option of playing this game on the wii u as well but i'll take a kirby game wherever I can get one. This has been Colin Unger reminding you to keep your thumbs glued to YXBA and always remember to select start. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe.